The movie begins around the 1960s, during the French rule of François de Valier in Haiti, a normal-looking man, Clairvius Narcisse, dies in the middle of the street. After relatives mourn for him at a funeral, a voodoo boker, Mater Liberiere, exhumes his body and turns him into a zombie through a mystical ritual. Along with a few other resurrected slaves, he gets tasked to maintain a sugar plantation in the dead of night. With no sense of free will indicated by their continuous groans and moans, the slaves are treated harshly by the plantation farmhands to ensure they do not wander away. As day breaks, Clarvius obeys their commands as he looks upon the sky and wonders about his true nature. Years later, in present-day Paris, Fanny, a teenager studying at an all-girls boarding school, sits through her history class to learn about historian Jules Michelet and the French Revolution. The professor teaches them the belief that history has always been a steady progression towards progress is incorrect since the values associated with the French Republic seem to falter or struggle, with their application or implementation no longer uniform across all aspects of society. After class ends, she joins her Haitian friend, Melissa, whose mother is a diplomat. She admits to having grown fond of her as they share the same tastes in music and clothing and interest in the horror genre. She enumerates her experiences with her school life and a message for her boyfriend, Pablo, who lives far away. Later, as students take their break in the courtyard, Fanny and her snobbish friends argue about including Melissa in their clique despite her odd and loner nature. One of her friends proposes to test her and discover if she has the qualities that fit their group. During a ball game, Fanny tells Melissa, who accepts the challenge despite not knowing what to do. Later, Fanny invents a sapphic encounter, messaging her boyfriend about a girl, Lola, who is infatuated with her, assuring she will remain loyal to him even though they almost kissed. Elsewhere, after another day of toiling on the plantation, Clarvius becomes hungry but gets banned from eating anything. He then experiences visions of his wife and snippets of a sunlit day, despite viewing the area around him as night all the time. Curious for answers, he wanders off into the wilderness. Meanwhile, Melissa meets Fanny and the clique in the boarding school's candlelit statue room. As they gather atop a table and prepare a bottle of liquor, Fanny formally introduces her to their secret literary society. They tell her to open up about something deeply personal that will resonate with their lives to join the group. However, before she could share, they immediately put out the candles and hid while a teacher inspected the room. After she leaves, they continue with the test, encouraging Melissa to drink gin to loosen her lips. The young Haitian girl then recites a portion of René de Pestre's poem, Captain Zombie. Though unnerved by her unusual choice, Fanny requests her friends to deliberate about her response in the next room, leaving Melissa alone to play music and dance to the rhythm. After a few minutes, the group happily welcome her into their society. As the members drink, Melissa shares her life story, immigrating to France at seven years old, soon after her family house got destroyed during the 2011 Haiti earthquake. Before her parents died, her mother earned the Legion d'honneur award for her achievements in fighting dictatorship and injustice. From then on, she was raised by her aunt, Katie, who she describes as a mambo, a voodoo priestess. The following day, the schoolgirls assemble in the hall as the superintendent announces they will attend the relighting ceremony of the unknown soldier's flame and meet with the French president. Later, while the group frolics in the grass apron, Fanny's curiosity sparks, searching more about voodoo magic on her phone. She later joins the girls in the lavatory, observing Melissa as she cleans her face. Meanwhile, Clarvius washes in the river while reciting a chant to keep evil spirits away. Later in the evening, he pauses at the overlook and views his Haitian town, thinking about returning home. The following day, the girls eat lunch while they gossip about one of their schoolmates, Lucy, who split with her boyfriend on social media. Later, Melissa calls her aunt to update her about her school life. At the same time, Fanny anxiously messages Pablo about seeing him in 11 days. Elsewhere, Clarvius wanders around a cemetery at night to locate his grave. He sits by his tombstone and reads the signpost when two individuals see him and become startled by his presence. He then leaves the area and sleeps on a pad of leaves under a big tree. Simultaneously, Fanny, Melissa, and the girls return to the art room and plaster themselves with cosmetics as they sing to the tune of a French hip-hop song. Fanny starts dreaming about her summer break with a shirtless Pablo, dancing in the forest as she rides his motorbike and prepares to give him a blowjob. Melissa then jokes that she will eat her as she plays around the idea of zombies. The following day, Melissa presented her English report about her favorite singer, Rihanna, and her roots in the West Indies nation of Barbados. While this continues, one of the girls, Salome, gossips about hearing her making weird noises while sleeping, similar to a zombie. Meanwhile, Clarvius carefully walks on the town streets, unsure of his destination as he tries to avoid eye contact with the locals. He sees his wife going home and spies on her as she sleeps alone in her bedroom. The next day, 
at chemistry class, Salome curiously peeks at Melissa's pencil drawing of a woman while Fanny becomes heartbroken after Pablo breaks up with her a few days before the term ends when they are supposed to reunite. Later, the schoolgirls attend a choral practice for the song, Silent Night, while Fanny cries while singing. Visibly saddened, she leaves the group and breaks down outside the corridor. Elsewhere, Aunt Katie performs a voodoo ritual and tires out after the chanting. In the morning, she confides with her late sister at a wall of her portraits, reporting about Melissa's performance in school while wishing she becomes more attuned with her Haitian heritage. She tells her that she has fully arranged a voodoo ceremony in Haiti. However, the reason for its conception is still being determined. Later, during her spare time, she tutors a young French boy in history to earn money. After receiving a call from her hometown, she tells her sister their family house is being rebuilt and updates her on the condition of her relatives, including her son, Eddie. She calls Melissa after leaving the house to walk some dogs. She feels delighted about hearing her adjust to a circle of friends while reminding her to be proud of being a Haitian girl. Returning home, she calms her mind by smoking and listening to authentic Haitian music on the radio. Suddenly, Fanny rings her door, introducing herself as Melissa's classmate. Knowing what a mambo does, she oddly requests Aunt Katie to get rid of her sadness with black magic. She initially refuses and castigates her, even though the young girl admits feeling possessed and is determined to die from breaking up with Pablo. She clarifies that voodoo is an inner force that needs to be learned over time and that she needs to let her heart heal naturally. Wendy offers to pay her 1,000 euros, but before Aunt Katie agrees to her proposal, she explains more about her role as a mambo, showing her pictures of deceased individuals and revealing she is a bearer of news to the dead. She then talks about Miriam, Melissa's mother, who had undergone missions to evaluate inhumane crimes under former Haitian President Jean-Claude Duvalier. Revealing that spirits enter her body to allow them to communicate, Fanny demands she sends Pablo's spirit into her body, refusing to forget about him. Katie explains that a living spirit cannot enter a body without consequences, warning her that the ritual will be too powerful for her to endure. Ignoring her own safety, Fanny proposes to increase the amount to 1,500 euros, though Katie allows her to rethink her options or become zombified like her father. After mulling it over in Melissa's old bedroom, she accepts the risks, leaving her with a partial cash amount and promising to return the next day for the ritual while lying about attending a funeral to excuse herself from her classes. Elsewhere, Clarvius roams the thick jungle at night and rests at a nearby ruin to eat. He then starts pacing around the area and becomes agitated. At the dormitory, Melissa awakens from a nightmare where she tries to consume Salome while she sleeps. She enters the lavatory and enters a cubicle. Salome enters and hears her making strange grunts and moans that freak her out. The following morning, Melissa is informed of Fanny's absence due to a funeral. The professor arrives and subjects the class to a surprise essay test. Meanwhile, Fanny returns to Katie's home, and upon leaving the additional cash amount on the counter, she begins the voodoo ritual as it coincides with Clarvius's ceremonial ritual in Haiti. Meanwhile, the literary society confronts Melissa about her strange noises in the bathroom, which she admits are just for fun since she cannot participate in the anniversary of her grandfather, revealed to be Clarvius's death. She elaborates that her relatives buried him immediately after dying from a disease, not knowing he stayed conscious for the whole ceremony. He later awakened as a zombie, given an antidote by the boker, and sent to work at the plantation. Her grandfather could neither speak again nor was he able to regain his past memories. He is given zombie powder daily that allows him to eat meat. Unable to bury himself in his grave, Clarvius tried in vain to find his masters to kill them. Still, he ended up hiding from his family upon realizing his zombification. Melissa reveals that Clarvius' brother asked the voodoo doctor to zombify him to solely gain the inheritance for the land, which was supposed to be sold. The Bizango, a secret voodoo society, protected his brother so he could never be harmed. He eventually died just before Melissa's aunt and mother were born. She continues by saying the cemeteries are guarded by the Loas, voodoo spirits that link God to humankind, with the worst one, Baron Samiti, the spirit of death. They can haunt a living person and turn them into a schwal, a possessed servant. Elsewhere, Katie adorns her apartment with candles and encloses Pablo's photograph inside a clay jar. Fanny is then instructed to call out his name several times to summon his spirit. Katie then draws a symbol with chalk on the floor and chants a hymn while the young girl concentrates. As the ritualists in Haiti play their instruments at the ceremony, Katie chants louder as Fanny envisions Pablo during their summer break in the woods. Unbeknownst to the pair, Baron Samiti gets summoned into the ritual, appearing before Pablo before insulting and disfiguring his face. Fanny then awakens with her eyes turning black as she becomes possessed by Samiti, ordering Katie to give him gifts. When she refuses and orders him to leave Fanny's body, she falls on the floor and convulses as the demon dances. Realizing she has been trapped in the spirit realm, 
she screams aloud. Elsewhere, Melissa finishes her story by claiming voodoo is a beautiful and powerful ancient practice to show that death and life are inseparable. Fanny then awakens to see Katie's lifeless body and returns to her dormitory to sleep. In the 1980s, it is revealed that Clarvius found the courage to reunite with his wife one sunny day. Instead of feeling surprised, she welcomes him back, relieved he is no longer a zombie slave. The movie ends at the present time when no one really knows how many zombies roam the streets of Haiti to this day. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.